can miss out school. Watch that be why go to learn the word of I don't like them at all. I don't like their style of dress, it's just to prove what they are, and they're very ignorant. What about parents? How do your parents react? My dad loves me. <laughs> at first they think, you know, is it something I've done? Is it anything, you know, have I raised you wrong? Have I done yeah. something against you? Or anything like that, you know. When you say no, it's just, you know, you've got to prove what you feel. <laughs> How baggy were those baggy trousers? Um, I think that was the. And my mum, I remember my mum being outraged that every time I went out shopping, I bought trousers that were just a little bit wider. You would buy a pair of jeans. You would sew them so that you, you'd mark them and then sew them so that they were so tight that they actually kind of looked like a pair of tights. Uh, the big fashion wore shell suits and uh, Nike trainers, Air Max. Um, but I took a long time in terms of getting into fashion. Flower power, long hair, your parents hated it. It was Beatles and the Stones and people doing, I think the big thing is people doing things slightly different to their parents generation. I think a lot of people of my age would give you the same answer. It was when Kennedy was shot. Everybody remember that. It was like eight or something. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's what we all remembered. We didn't know it was the end of the world or what it was. And I remember seeing on the news um, some of the kind of pictures of the clashes that were taking place between the miners and policemen, some of the police horses, uh, Arthur Scargill. Yeah, it was quite a big issue at the time. It was my grandfather, my German grandfather, who was a massive, massive sort of Elvis fan. And Elvis died and I was sent out. <laughs> to buy all the newspapers and then cut out all the Elvis stories and put them into a book and then read through them with him and listen to Elvis all day. I love Elvis now. <laughs> in terms of the origins of the British Youth Council, uh, to begin with in 1948 it was the British wing of the World Assembly of Youth. Uh, in terms of the way it changed over the years, by the 60s you get the impression that it had uh, become a bit more independent from government. Of course, the 60s was a very radical time anyway, especially for young people, so that's what you'd expect. But um, there's some good anecdotes, I think, around different things that happened in uh, the 60s and 70s, where young people were attending international events and kind of banging the table. One of these was uh, a big event in Cuba. The World Federation of Democratic Youth put it on, and there were some people uh, who you still heard of, Peter Mandelson was one of them, Trevor Phillips was another, Paul Boitain, now the High Commissioner in South Africa. We got some good coverage. I remember we were all expected to take um, our own knives and forks because, you know, we had to be a bit self-sufficient. The Cuban economy didn't have everything for everybody. There were these great numbers of, I don't know, there were five or six thousand, I suppose, people who descended on Havana. And I remember The Guardian reporting on their front page on hearing the, the joining instructions, bring your own knife and fork, the rather memorable headline, cutlery shortage in Cuba. Actually, that's about addressing youth participation um, across the board and youth engagement in politics. It's about improving the quality of citizenship education. It's about ensuring there's a national youth council in every borough that's supported. It's about ensuring that young people have an opportunity to engage with pol politicians and that politicians go out there and they talk to young people. So I think, for me, that's the key policy change that needs to happen, but it's obviously not just um, lowering the age of franchise, it's actually about putting a lot of support and a lot of work in there in place to ensure that young people have the skills and the opportunities um, and believe that politicians are going to listen to them if they participate. 
I remember feeling as a young person really, really powerless. And you know, the, the the campaign that I'm absolutely sort of from my heart most committed to is Votes at 16 because that feeling of actually not being able to do anything, you can't even go and vote. It felt criminal. It felt really criminal. It was a real sort of you know, don't I matter? Doesn't what I think count? You know, feeling really, really angry about it. If Voting is absolutely for me fundamental. Anyone can sit home and be cynical and say politicians don't. We need a thriving democracy. That requires politicians. It requires people to be active and to be involved. And they really enjoy it. It's fulfilling from as young an age as you can manage. I didn't know much about anything of like BYC and anything like that. So now I know, and I know how long it's been running for, which is quite surprising actually. But I'm going to go back and let everybody know that something is out there for us youth. What I will do for just one day, I get all the civil servants, all the MPs, and the people of the government to actually really go out, you know, the, to really go outside there and you know work as other policemen and just be outside there in the streets and see what really is happening. That's what I'll do. Today I wrote down that it was quite empowering that you felt okay. I'm here. Maybe there's something I can do. When you go back home, like say to somebody you know, like being a member of the youth council, there's small steps might go a long way. A world peace movement. A world